Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model Excel template. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So let's get started. On the dashboard tab you may input core inputs for your model and also see the core financials and core charts based on the assumptions you input in the model. Let's start the top of the model from the revenue sheet where we can set the starting point of population, for example 100,000 people in your region and population growth rate year over year. For example, let's say it will be 10%. So in the year 2024, based on this calculation, you will have 146,000 of population. The next set of assumptions is patient base assumptions. So in here you may input up to five different treatment names, for example, treatment A, treatment B, whatever name you need for your model. And here you may input what is the percentage of population need this treatment. In other words, percentage of patients based on the total population. Another assumptions will be patients percentage. This means that what is the percentage of patients will use your, your services. In other words, services uh, which your business provides. Below you may find the input for count of visits per patient. This means this annual visits. For example, for treatment A, 100 visits per year for patients which needs treatment A, then 120, 130, 140, and 150. This you can input based on years and based on different treatment types. And also below you can input price per visits, which you can input depends on the treatment and depends on the year. Additionally, on the revenue tab, you can input patient's growth rate. This means that this patient's 27% will be increased for 1%, the next year 0%, the year after 2% and 1% in the last year. These percentages are also changeable. So you may see the calculation of uh, patient's share depending on the amount which you input on the dashboard in here and patient's growth rate here, so 27% was the starting point, plus 5%, and in the next year you will have 32% for the treatment A, etc, etc. So based on all these assumptions of the revenue tab and dashboard tab, you have the calculation of patients and new patients by years and by treatments with some total amounts. Additionally, you can input seasonality for the patient acquisition or new patients requirement and the visit seasonality across the year in case if this treatment is seasonal based. So once you set up all these inputs for revenue, for seasonality, the patient base inputs, your variable, fixed and wages expenses, you may see the core charts, just profitability, the revenue breakdown, the cash flow, cumulative cash flow and see the core financials by main categories and by years. On the financial charts tab you may see two sets of charts which is 24 months period breakdown by months and five years period broken down by months. On the top set of charts you may see the revenue breakdown by five treatment types for 24 months and for 5 years. The next set of charts will show you your cash inflow and cash outflow related to operating activities, the next cash balance and the last one will show you the EBDA broken down by revenue, variable expenses, other OPEX which is wages and fixed expenses and as a result your EBDA. On the operational chart step, you can see also two sets of charts, 
exactly the same breakdown by 24 months and by 5 years. On the top you may see the general clinic statistics, which is total active patients and total number of visits by months. Your revenue by patient type, revenue per one treatment, one patient, second treatment patient, etc. etc. And this is broken down by percentage allocation. Your OPEX productivity, which is OPEX amount per one patient and OPEX amount per one visit. And your workers productivity, which is revenue per employee and OPEX per employee. On the KPI benchmark step, you may see five main industry benchmarks, which are also changeable depending on your industry, depending on your country or region. For example, in your country, benchmark of gross margin for this business is 70%. So you may see that on the gross margin KPI tab, the industry gross margin is updated. And this is also works for all other four main KPI benchmarks. For example, profit margin is 15%, which is also changed on this chart. And you can also change wages as a percentage of revenue your average revenue per patient and your average net profit per patient. All these values are calculated by years depending on the inputs and drivers in your model. And you may see the graphical information on the charts which show you the, your KPIs or your metrics based on model and industry metrics. On the income statement tab, you may see your main profit and loss line items, which is revenue, broken down by treatments, variable expenses, gross margin, salaries and wages, fixed expenses, EBGA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, net profit before tax, tax expense, and as a result, net profit after tax. On the cash flow tab, you may see your cash flow statement breakdown by operating activities, financing activities, and investing activities, and as a result, net increase or decrease in cash held. The more collapsed form cash flow statement in direct method, it is the same operating activities, investing activities, financing activities, and your cash movement in more collapsed form. On the balance sheet, you may see your current assets, which is Cash, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities, and your equity broken down by months for the five-year model. On the summary tab, you may see the summarization of all these three reports broken down by five years and also the breakdown of one particular year, which you can select here. You may see your income statement breakdown and the main line items on the charts below, your balance sheet, collapsed form, and the main line items, and your cash flow statement also in collapsed form, and the main line items, which is operating, investing, financing, net cash flow, and closing cash on the charts below. At the top revenue tab, you may see the breakdown of your revenue by products and also by years with absolute values and percentage breakdown. The same information you may see on the charts below. Here you may see the percentage breakdown and absolute values breakdown. Below you may see the revenue depth and monthly run rate chart. You can select the year and based on this year you will see the information of revenue by products as absolute values and percentage revenue breakdown on the pie chart. On the revenue bridge, you may find the main revenue drivers of growth. You may select the first year and you may select the last year. And between these years, you will see the waterfall chart. And you may see which are the main drivers of your revenue growth, which specific products grow faster and which specific products grow slower. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories, 
and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with the total below. And also to the right you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year. And you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular, particular use case you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, which you may input here. Cost of loans you previously inputted in on the dashboard. Calculation of resource share you may see here. There is also tax rate. And here we find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model there is two valuation methods, which is EBGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods. Based on this information we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow and PV. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color we have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally, you have content tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the variable expenses tab, you may find up to 12 placeholders to input your variable expenses by different line items. You have different options of how to forecast your variable expenses. First type is forecast as a percentage of total revenue. And for each treatment you have two line items to forecast your variable expense as dollar per one visit for particular treatment. On the top you may see the main drivers for this calculation. So you have total revenue and you have different count of visits by months for each treatment type. And below you may input your assumptions. So for uh, variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue you can input different percentages. And for next 10 line items you can input dollar amount per one visit for this particular treatment. Below you may find the calculation of all these line items. And in income statement 
the variable expenses section, you may see these amounts by months. On the wages tab, you can input your headcount by categories with hire and fire date, with annual salary, with ability to input different number of employees by years, with annual salary rise percentage, with monthly bonus and tax rate. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let it be CFO, which you are going to hire in March 20. You are not going to fire him, so the fire date will be December 24. So annual salary can be $50,000 and this will be one CFO over the time. So you may see one CFO, which is one headcount starting from March till the end of the model, which is December 24. Also, you can input 5% of salary growth rate. You may see the amounts by years connected to this annual salary and impacted by annual salary rise. Let's set up 10% monthly bonus and 5% of tax rate. So you may see below the calculation of salary broken down by months, monthly bonus, which is 10%, and 5% of monthly taxes related to the payroll. Another option would be admin account, which will start in April which will grow till the end of the model with annual salary of $30,000. Let it be in year number 1, 2, then 4, 6, 8 and 10 headcounts. Three percentage of annual salary growth, 5 percentage of monthly bonus and 5 percentage of payroll tax rate. So in here you may see total staff numbers, which is 2 for the year number 1. 2020, starting from year 2021, we'll have 4, then 6, 8, and 10 in the last year of the model. Again, calculation of salaries for these two, in this case 4, that counts, calculation of bonuses, and calculation of monthly base taxes. You may see an income statement, total salaries and wages. And here you may see the total amount of bonuses, payroll taxes and wages for these headcounts. On the fixed expenses tab, you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, we have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. Let me see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with the amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550 in April you have 30 days this means this will be $1500 also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year once you input this growth rate you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year let me give you a couple of other expenses types for example advertising Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B weekly. For example, $500, you can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two B-weekly payments within the month, 
$500 multiplied by 2, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup. which can be one-time payment, which will happen in February 20, with the amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates, because this is just one-time fee, and you may see that office setup will happen in February 20, with this amount. Another option, insurance, let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model, and it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month, with 5% of growth first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third, and 1% year number four. So you may see this calculation here, starting from January 21, it will grow for 5%, which is $50, and starting from January 22, it will grow for 3%, which is additionally $32. Another option quarterly, you may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually, in this case you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments, you will pay one time per 12 months starting from February till December 24. For each expense type, you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also, in income statement, you may find total fixed expenses group. If you will ungroup this section, you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. You may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of real examples. For example, this will be kitchen and other development expenses. You can input purchase date for each category. For example, February and March. You can input spending $50,000, $10,000, for example. You can also use payment delay feature, which means that if you will sell it for the kitchen two months, you will pay in April for the kitchen and, for example, three months for other development expenses, which means that you will pay for it in June 20. The total amount of development expenses connected to the asset step. You may see it here. By default, the useful time for development capex is five years, so you may see the calculation of depreciation and closing netbook value. We are also able to input up to six other assets, for example, other, capex, with launch date, for example, June, with three years of useful time, with $5,000 cost. You may see the calculation here. So, in this step, you have calculation of capital expenditure, book depreciation, and closing netbook value. The total amounts you may see in income statement tab in depreciation section. For the cash flow, you can see the fixed assets capital expenditure. And in the balance sheet, you may see fixed assets, assets closing book value, and capex prepayments. In case of you will prepayment, prepay these amounts, and it will pay in some months after, you will have capex payable. Because we set up two and three months payment delay. You may see that we have capex payable. I can also remove here or select zero months. In this case, capex payable will be zero, but you'll have just fixed assets, amounts broken down by months. For the capitalization table, you can input different founders and investors' contributions. 
broken down by different dates of funding with different cost of share for each series and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder one, founder two. So total amount of shares for founder one can be 10,000, for founder number two, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder one is $20,000, for founder two is $40,000. In total they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May, cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the Series A total equity was $16,000, after $65,000 and Investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of Founder 1 and Founder 2 also diluted. 32.26 and 46.52 percentage. You can also input some amounts for Series B and Series C the same way you can set up the date, cost of share and up to 5 investors is up to 5 placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings and you may see the balance sheet which shows you the total equity by months. Also on the top of the dashboard you have debt assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt we are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input an amount of the debt, the launch date, term will be 60 months and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it. No repayments, no terms in terms of interest. So all the calculations of the debts you may see on the capital tab. Calculations for the debt number one, debt number two, debt number three, total debts with grants. These calculations impacts income statement, interest expenses, the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments and on the balance sheet you have the debt closing balance. On the top of the dashboard you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. You have currency outputs. It can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs. So let me give an example. When you input in United States dollars, you have Euro as an output. And for this case, you can set up currency exchange rate. This is 1.2, for example, in this case, you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars, all your outputs in euros, 
and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs. Additionally, you have denomination, which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports. In this example, you have denomination is 1000, means that your outputs is denominated by 1000. You can select millions. You may see that now it is in million dollars. You can set also billions or without any denomination. Additionally, you have corporate tax setup. You can change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for reviewing this. Uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.